assalamu alaikum everyone so today in this video i'm going to discuss the next chapter chapter number 12 metapoietic and lymphoid systems from the medium robins in which we will discuss the red cell disorders white cell disorders and the bleeding disorders these are important for the sqs and mcqs point of view the pathogenesis of all the anemias or the white cell disorders are not important for the sq point of view i will let you know about the important ones survey karni hai that are important for the sq point of view so just give read to the red cell disorders uh, the introduction of red cell disorders and then table 12.1 classification of anemia according to the underlying mechanism in which we will discuss the blood loss increased destruction which is further divided into the intrinsic and the extrinsic abnormalities and then we have the impaired red cell production just go through this summary this is important and then we will discuss the anemia of the blood loss hemorrhage in which we will do the hemolytic anemia this is important for the sqs and mcqs point of view which is further divided into the extravascular hemolysis and the intravascular hemolysis this is important and then we have uh, its lab findings are also important for the mcqs point of view hereditary spherocytosis this is again important for the mcqs point of view usually isme se zyada nahi aata so just give read to the hereditary spherocytosis this is important for the mcqs point of view that splenomegaly is more common and prominent in hereditary spherocytosis than in any other form of the hemolytic anemia and the diagnostic point of this hereditary spherocytosis in is the whole jolly bodies this is important jab bhi scenario mein ye aayega to hamare paas option hogi hereditary spherocytosis correct and then we have the sickle cell anemia this is important for the sq point of view and mcqs point of view just go through its pathogenesis hame percentage ka pata hona chahiye hpa hpa2 and fetal hemoglobin ki percentage ka this is important um isme we should know about the sickle cell trait and the sickle cell disease दोनों में डिफरेंस क्या है दिस इज इम्पॉर्टेंट दोनों में हमारे पास हीमोग्लोबिन की कॉन्सेंट्रेशन क्या है डिफरेंट हीमोग्लोबिन की दैट इज इम्पॉर्टेंट एंड देन दीज फैक्टर्स इम्पॉर्टेंट एंड द मोरफोलॉजी इज इम्पॉर्टेंट इसमें भी हमारे पास क्रू कट अपेरेंस होती है प्रोमिनेंट चीक बोन होती है दिस इज डायग्नोस्टिक पॉइंट ऑफ द सिकल सेल डिजीज एंड देन पैथोफिजोलॉजी फिगर ट्वेल्व पॉइंट फोर दिस इज इम्पॉर्टेंट फॉर द एस क्यू पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू thalassemia thalassemia is the first most important sq of this chapter just go through its definition its pathogenesis is important for the uh, mc uh, sq point of view and then the lab findings are very much important for the sq point of view we should know about the beta thalassemia and alpha thalassemia the difference between them and then uh, just go through the table 12.3 and yes this uh, question is important that define the thalassemia trait this is important jiske andar sirf hamare paas trait hota hai aur hamare paas koi bhi uh, healthy physical symptoms nahi hote and then uh, its ka bhi diagnostic point hai crequent appearance of the skull hamare paas lab findings ke andar we should uh, divide the lab findings into the certain headings um for example cbc pe kya findings aati hai peripheral blood smear pe kya findings aati hai bone marrow biopsy pe kya aati hai x ray pe kya aati hai is pe electrophoresis mein kya aati hai and the osmotic fragility test jab bhi humne kisi ki lab findings likhni hai to humne in headings ke under likhni hai and then just go through the clinical features and then uh, figure 12.5 pathogenesis of beta thalassemia major is again important for the sq point of view glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency this is again important for the mcqs point of view same goes for the paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria iski um, ye line bahut important hai that the most feared complication of pnh is thrombosis which often occurs within the abdominal vessels such as the portal vein and the hepatic vein this is important for the mcqs point of view then just go to the immuno uh, hemolytic anemia table 12.4 classification of the immunohemolytic anemias in which we have the warm antibody type and the cold antibody type this is important for the viva point of view you can skip this topic malaria this is not important for the mcqs sq or the viva point of view go through this summary this is important and then we have the anemia of the diminished erythropoiesis in which we have the uh, iron deficiency anemia this is important for the sq point of view thalassemia ke baad the most important sq jo hai wo hai iron deficiency anemia hai its causes are important past paper ka question hai causes jo hai wo pathogenesis mein mil jayengi aur jo lab findings hai wo hamare paas morphology mein mil jayengi this is important for the sq point of view and then you can just skip the figure 12.9 this is not important 
pathogenesis is important for the SCQ point of view. And then we have the anemia of the chronic inflammation. This is again important for the MCQ's point of view. Uh, megaloblastic anemia is important for the MCQs and the SCQ point of view. Its pathogenesis is important. Its morphology is important. Jab bhi hamar pa scenario mein hypersegmented neutrophils aega to um, it will always be megaloblastic anemias. Megaloblastic anemia mein we have the folate deficiency anemia and the vitamin B12 deficiency anemia. Its pathogenesis and its layer findings, its morphology all are important for the SCQ point of view. And then we have the aplastic anemia. This is again important for the viva point of view. Or kabi kabar isme se SQ bhi aa jata hai. So this is important. It's pathogenesis and it's uh, lab findings. And then just go through this uh, summary. Any uh, anemia of diminished erythropoiesis. So this is all about uh, red cell disorders. We will discuss the white cell disorders in my next video. Thank you so much. Allah Hafiz.